Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, so Saturday was the day after Camilla's father, Christopher, had been captured. They had the manhunt out for him, and he finally was captured on Friday. And the very next day would have been Camilla's first birthday. And so they still did something for her. And I want to show you guys um, what they did. It's really, really sweet. The mayor is saying that uh, he still would like everyone to continue with wearing, you know, he wanted them to wear pink. He wants them to um, continue to call for justice, right? And to support the family if anybody's able to help contribute towards the GoFundMe. He also mentioned that. And so I think it's really incredible that we're now seeing these, it's not incredible that we lost these children, but to see the leaders of the community stepping up and actually, you know, leading the community. I really, I really love to see it. I really do. But let me bring you over to a video. And um, I'm going to show you what they did for her. It's it's really sweet. It's pretty hard to watch her mom. Very sad. Very, very sad. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting. And thank you for honoring my daughter. Thank you for her a lot. Nagatuck is bending together in tragedy. A vigil was held earlier this evening for baby Camilla, the baby who was murdered last month. The suspected killer, Camilla's father, Christopher Francis Sweeney, was arrested yesterday after two weeks on the run. A small weight lifted off the shoulders of a community that's still mourning tonight. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Audrey Russo has the details. Nagatuck's empty green filled up with people, a dark night illuminated by light and a grieving family enveloped in a wave of pink on what would have been baby Camilla's first birthday. On any other year, the tree lighting ceremony would be the main draw to the center of Nagatuck. And the sign wishing everyone a safe and happy holiday season might have been taken for granted. But this year, things are different. A different tree wrapped in a different color of string lights for a crowd of people with Christmas cheer far from their minds. The whole situation's heartbreaking. I don't have any words. It's just, it's a baby. Didn't deserve that. December 3rd, what would have been the first of many birthdays for Camilla Francis Guini. became a memorial for the child whose life was cut short by violence. Our crews were heavily involved with the uh, incident and we would like to show our support to the family. I imagine it's probably one of the tougher calls you guys have taken in a while. Oh, absolutely. Probably one of the toughest in my many years of EMS. Our city, our town, our nation needs healing. Every day you see your daughter, every day. And then one day it just stopped. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I don't know. Lifting up a family weighed down by unexpected loss. Release. The memorial is a reminder. No milestone can be promised. Not another birthday or another safe and happy holiday season. What can be promised is the memory of baby Camilla, enshrined in pink by a community that loved her. It's very sad, but it's also very touching. And it, and it says a lot about Naugatuck. I just want to keep that smile and that laughter alive. Naugatuck's mayor encouraged people to continue supporting the family by wearing pink, by donating to the GoFundMe, and by continuing to demand justice. Yeah, continue to demand justice. Isn't that incredible what they did? Oh, and the singing was so beautiful. So sad for the mother. I just couldn't fathom being her 
what he did, it was horrific. Oh, awful. Yeah, Carmen, a large crowd of support for Camilla and her family here in Naugatuck tonight. You can see pink throughout the park for what would have been Camilla's first birthday. And we're hearing from her family for the first time. Her mom emotional, saying she's got grateful and appreciative of the support during these tough times and wants to keep her daughter's smile alive. <laughs> We're here tonight to bond together and to give strength to each other. And more importantly, to give strength and help to Camilla's family. People in pink filled the Naugatuck Green Saturday to pray for and honor 11-month-old Camilla Francis Sweeney on what would have been her first birthday. Her father, accused of killing her last month, was taken into custody Friday after weeks on the run. Tears filled the eyes of Camilla's family and her mother, Crystal. Everything, yeah, I appreciate everything. And I've been trying not to cry and everything because I just want to keep my baby smile and laughter. Just because that's all she did. She hardly cried. She mainly laughs, but it's kind of hard because it's like every day you see your daughter every day. And then one day it just stops. I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Things will get better. I don't know. But I just want to keep that smile and that laughter alive. Without y'all, two there wouldn't have been any justice. And that's the best birthday gift I could give my baby. Candles, balloons, and pink. This is how community members wanted to honor Camilla. It's really sad and really heartbreaking. And I couldn't imagine what the family are going through with such a big loss. A large crowd of people showed up to wish her a happy birthday and show their support for the family. Camilla was laid to rest last weekend. The community mourning alongside the family of this tragedy. She's never gonna have another birthday like this, like at all, which is like very sad. So just in spirit, you know, to give her something that she would have wanted for her birthday. People at the vigil say it was a blessing. Her father, an accused killer, Christopher Francis Queenie, was arrested the day before her birthday. He was taken into custody only about five miles from us here in Waterbury. He's being held on a $5 million bond and is scheduled to appear in court Monday. Live in Naugatuck, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. Very tough story to be on. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, and so I think that's incredible what they did. I think it's so, so nice. And um, I mean, it's to hear her mother say that the best gift she could have gave her daughter was that the police had caught and captured him the day before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. When I had found out it was her birthday uh, a couple days ago, and I was just like, wow, wow. That is incredible. Um, okay, I am gonna give you a, a sad update, right? Um, I mean, as if that wasn't sad, right? Uh, I'm gonna show you the update on Christopher, right? And so it's a bit frustrating. I'm, 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 I haven't watched it, uh, but I did just see a title of it and it's something else you guys something else we need justice for this little baby right now at five the man accused of killing his own child makes his first court appearance what we're learning from the courtroom plus a truck driver is dead after a crash involving several vehicles on i-84 what investigators have on coming up in a live report good evening thanks so much for joining us i'm keisha grant and i'm mike heideck after being on the run for 14 days christopher francis Sweeney, the man accused of killing his own 11 month old daughter faced a judge in court today nbc connecticut's priscilla landaverde was in that waterbury courtroom and joins us now live with the very latest priscilla 
Yeah, well, Mike and Keisha, prosecutors argued several factors that contributed to the judge setting bond at $5 million. Lawyers said that Christopher Francis Greeny is a danger to the public and a flight risk after being on the run for 14 days, which initiated a multi-state search for him. It was a packed courtroom inside the Waterbury Superior Court on Monday. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Francis Sweeney, the record is replete with evidence and convictions of extreme violence. 31-year-old Christopher Francis Queenie was before a judge for a slew of charges, most significantly murder with special circumstances for the death of his 11-month-old daughter, Camilla, on November 18th. He poses an extreme risk to public safety. He has numerous cases pending here. Over the weekend, family members gathered in Naugatuck for a vigil in honor of what would have been baby Camilla's first birthday. This morning, they were in court as prosecutors argued Francis Queenie is a danger to the public and a flight risk. He cut off his ankle bracelet and went undetected by law enforcement officials for two weeks. He even refused to be fingerprinted today or be interviewed by the bail commissioner. Prosecution lawyers argued he has several open criminal cases in Waterbury, Derby, Bridgeport and Milford. In one instance, he seriously injured a victim leaving them in the intensive care unit. Lawyers say Francis Queenie was already out on bonds upwards of $300,000. I have a remand to custody order from the uh, from his parole officer, will, which will prevent his release uh, from regardless of what bond he makes. The judge set Francis Queenie's bond at $5 million for the charges in connection to Camilla's death. This is truly a horrific crime on the and the judge said that Francis Queenie will be transported to Bridgeport tomorrow to face charges in a separate case, and then he'll be in Milford on Wednesday. He's due back here in Waterbury on December 21st. We're now live in Waterbury. Brisada Landa Verde, NBC Connecticut News. Keisha, back to you. Brisada, thank you. Okay, so there's some of it. Uh, I'm going to take you to one more video. There was um, another one that I wanted to get to, but it's trying to get me to like pay some thing for it or something so i'm not gonna do that but what it did say uh in the description like on it it says warrant um nagatok man accused of mutil mutilating infant daughter heard voices telling him to kill are you kidding me i mean this guy is just trying to come up with like an insanity plea because and it's not gonna work because he knew enough to run so it's, it's not gonna work it's not gonna work but here we'll play this one um and i'll read if they don't go over uh all of it i'll read at the bottom what uh what else it said it's a sweetie record is replete with evidence and convictions of extreme violence the father accused of brutally killing his 11-month-old daughter, then sparking a massive manhunt, face a judge. Christopher Francis Queenie kept his head down and did not speak in court today. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane is live outside Waterbury Superior Court tonight with the very latest from there. Matt. No, Aaron and Stephanie, the 36 page arrest warrant goes into detail into what happened. Everything from interviews with Christopher Francis Queenie's family, friends, even witnesses who ran into him while he was on the run. But what it does not answer, that big question, why? You understand all that, sir? No response. Christopher Francis Queenie never looked up, never answered the judge's questions during his court appearance this morning. The 31 year old is charged with murder and risk of injury, accused of killing his baby girl, Camilla inside their Naugatuck home last month. This involves the death and horrific mutilation of a child two weeks before his her first birthday. According to the arrest warrant, on the day of the murder, Francis Queenie allegedly got mad first at his father and then got into an argument with his girlfriend. Police say in between is when he killed their baby girl, strangling her and then stabbing her. When the little girl's mom got home, that's when she discovered the horrific scene. Francis Queenie's father telling investigators he was on the phone with his wife when he heard screaming. Chris killed the baby, called the cops. He took my car. Police say Francis Sweeney then cut off his GPS ankle monitor and visited friends he hadn't seen in years, trying to sell his father's car and asking for a sweatshirt to wear. Police eventually found the car abandoned in New Haven, along with a knife in the glove box they believed was used in the crime. But two weeks after the start of a massive manhunt, police took Francis Sweeney into custody 
after someone recognized him at a bus stop near the Waterbury train station. This is truly a horrific crime of unfathomable nature. He has several cases pending, most are felonies, several in other courts. He has several failures to appear as well. He posted $350,000 uh, and was out when this new horrific crime occurred. But while getting him off the street provides some relief, for Camilla's family, the grief will never go away. Saturday night, Naugatuck came together to support a mother and remember her baby girl who would have turned one that day. I just want to keep that smile and that laughter alive. Now, Christopher Francisquini is being held on $5 million on that murder charge. He's due back here at Waterbury Superior Court later this month. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom in Waterbury. Matt McFarland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Matt. Can you imagine, as a mother, finding your child after having been strangled and stabbed and partially dismembered? Wow. 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 I feel so bad for that mother. I cannot imagine the trauma. Oh, wow, that's horrific. That is so bad. Like, this man is is awful. I mean, I, I, I don't even know how else. He's so evil. It's awful what he's done. Absolutely awful. Um, I'm just going to go through that really quick and make sure there wasn't anything um, not said in this real quick. The judge said his bond and the murder charge, $5 million, and added another $1.4 four or five million bond for several other outstanding warrants. I don't know if I heard that part said. So I um, wanted to say that. He was in handcuffs when he was in front of the judge. And the his attorney asked the judge to put him on suicide watch. The judge also issued a protective order barring him from any contact with three unnamed people. He's, um, no, we know that. Um, she was choked, stabbed, dismembered on the 18th. Authorities obtained an arrest warrant that charged the father. Oh. So it says that he had an argument with an unnamed female the morning that she was killed, according to the court documents. During the argument, he's accused of smashing the woman's phone and leaving her in the parking lot of a nearby store. Hmm. Several people interviewed by detectives said that they hadn't noticed anything off with him in the days and weeks leading up to his daughter's murder. The unnamed female told police that he suffered from bipolar disorder and that he was prescribed medication, which she didn't believe he was taking. She also said that he often heard voices and that one time the voice told him to kill his father, according to the documents. Wow. Listen. If he's hearing voices, it's more than just bipolar, everybody. <laughs> it is definitely more than just bipolar. And as a grown adult, that's his responsibility to be taking his medication for his bipolar. Simply being bipolar is not an excuse for these people to go and murder. It's really not. Um, police said that concerned citizen called an anonymous tip. And the caller told the police that he had altered his appearance, but was still recognizable. And then the day after he was arrested, the community came together to honor Camilla's life and what would have been her first birthday. Um, <clears throat> police described the baby's murder as heinous and horrific. Wow. They said that they'll carry this case with them for the rest of their lives. He hopes that the community feels a sense of relief. He wants to reassure people that Christopher is not going to be released and he faces a slew of charges. We hope that the community can breathe easier knowing that this violent criminal was taken into custody. And he's due back on December 21st. I will write that down and look into it so that I get the update on it and how it goes and keep you guys posted with that. So you're going to know what's going on. Um, 
but please just think of Camilla with her beautiful smile, right? Her happy, beautiful little smile, not like, not at all like, uh, unfortunately, what her mother had to say, right? And we'll get justice, right? Let's just uh, let the court system do what it's got to do and and uh, let's get justice for this baby. Let's keep this man locked up forever. Please. No more letting this guy out. It's all done. All done. Continue to pray for her family. And uh, very, you know, specifically the, the family that lives in the home. The father. And absolutely her mother. Please, please continue to pray. I will talk to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.